In the third and fourth parts of lesson nine, we're going to compare a deterministic model to a simulation of that same model. They kind of look similar. The simulation model is going to have uh, actually three data tables when we're all finished. The deterministic model is going to use the mean demand to calculate profit. So in the deterministic version of the model, we have a bookstore named Walton Bookstore. The number of calendars sold at Walton Bookstores appears to be normally distributed with a mean of 200 and a standard deviation of 40. It decides to order 200 calendars. Each calendar costs the bookstore $7.53 and sells for $9.75. At the end of the year, all unsold calendars will be returned to the publisher for a refund of $2.37 per calendar. Is ordering the average quantity of calendars demanded a good decision? Well, in order to answer that, again, we're gonna compare this deterministic model to the simulation we do in part four of lesson nine. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna build the model. And I've already done that over here in Excel in worksheet L3 of lesson underscore unit nine, uh, last name, right? The unit cost of each calendar is $7.53. The unit price is $9.75. And then we have the unit refund. This is what we can sell them for to our customers. And this is what we can sell them if we have excessive inventory and we sell them back to the uh, publisher. Now the mean quantity demanded is 200. And we wanna know if ordering the average quantity of calendars demanded is a good decision. So this is gonna be 200. Now the demand is just simply 200. The revenue is 200 times the unit price. The cost is the 200 times the unit cost. There's gonna be no refund here because we're gonna sell 200 by assumption and we ordered 200, the refund will be zero. Now the profit is the revenue minus the cost plus any refund. Now let's go over here and see if we got the answers correct. Looks like we got everything right. Now here's the problem with the deterministic model. Some years we sell 200, some years we sell 190, some years we sell 300, some years we sell 100, right? We have this normally distributed variable with a mean of 200 and a standard deviation of 40. More realistically, it's gonna look like this. Equal norm dot inverse, RNAD generates random numbers between zero and one. Using this to simulate a probability between zero and one, we have the mean and the standard deviation. We can calculate different amounts sold. If I hit F9, I get a quantity demanded that is unique. And these values in cell B9 are normally distributed with a mean 200 and a standard deviation of 40. Now I got to fix my model here, right? When the quantity sold, quantity demanded, is less than the order quantity, we have excess inventory. And we need to sell that excess inventory back to publisher. And why do we want to do that? Because we'll earn $2.37 for each one that is sold back to the publisher. The refund is gonna be the difference between these two times the refunded amount. Now, when I press enter, it's gonna change my quantity demanded. But notice 
then it changed it to a value that is less than the mean of 200, right? So in this situation, I get the refund. I get the revenue. And then my cost is $1,506. So when I add these two together, my total revenue is $1,688.98. If I subtract 1506 from that, I get a profit, profit of 182.97. Let me change these decimal places to two. Now, there's a problem with this refund. I can't get a negative refund. Here, demand is 227. I'm selling 227 of these calendars, but I only purchased 200 of them. I can't get a negative refund. So I have to fix the sell here. And the way you fix the sell is the maximum of the refund in case you have excess inventory and then zero. So here, my demand is 100.5 and my quantity supplied is 200. The difference in these two is almost 100. And 100 times 2.37 is roughly that amount, right? So let's hit F9 again. When I have a situation where my demand exceeds my order quantity, I'm only gonna be able to sell 200 of them because I only ordered 200 of them, right? I only have 200 available for sale, right? So I basically what this is saying is I have 245 people coming in to buy the calendar, but 45 are gonna walk away with no calendar because I only stocked 200, right? So that's why my refund here is zero now. Now the revenue is based off of what? The revenue is based off the demand here. This is okay in the situation where demand is less than quantity supplied. But that's not the case here, is it? So what we have to do here is we have to take the minimum of demand, the quantity demanded, and the quantity supplied. So in situations where Demand is really high. We're not going to be able to sell 242 calendars because, again, we only ordered 200 of them. So in this situation, we, we sell 200 of them, right? 200 times 9.75 is 1,950. So when 200 is smaller than the demand, we're multiplying the 200 times the unit price. When demand is smaller than the quantity ordered that we have available for people to buy, we multiply the quantity demanded by the price. In this situation, we're going to have a refund. And you can see that ordering 200 may not be the best decision. Our demand is really low. It's lower than what we ordered, what we supplied to our customers, what we stocked on our shelves. In that situation, we have excess inventory. So the difference in these two is our excessive inventory. We got to sell those back to the publisher. When demand is really, really high, we have 300 basically 301 people coming into our store to buy calendars. We only have two to sell. And that represents lost sales of 101. In a given year, you could have demand that's really, really high, maybe not as high, or really, really low. It's going to vary quite a bit around 200. We're going to either have excessive inventory or we're going to have lost sales. Now, is there a better way to determine our order quantity? That's what we're going to do in part four.